In this video, we will learn how to create a database using Entity Framework Core in a Blazor web app in .NET 8. Let's start Visual Studio 2022. Click Create a New Project. From the All Project Types drop-down, select Other and select the Blank Solution template and click Next. Let's give the solution a name. Say Simple Book Catalog and click Create. Let's add a project for our domain layer. Right click the solution in Solution Explorer and select Add New Project. In this drop down here, select Library and select the Class Library template here and click Next. Let's give the project a name. Since this project represents our domain layer, let's name it simplebookcatalog.domain. So copy the solution name and paste it here and add the .domain suffix and click Next. Make sure .NET 8 is in the drop-down and click Create. We don't need the class1 class here, so let's right-click the class1.cs class file and click Delete. Let's create a folder inside this project for our book class. So right-click the project in Solution Explorer and select Add New Folder. Let's name the folder Entities. Right-click the Entities folder and select Add Class. Name the class book and click the add button. Let's remove these using statements here. Press control period and click remove unnecessary usings. Make the class public so that it can be accessed outside the project. A book needs to be uniquely identified. So let's create a public int property called id. A book will also have a title. So let's create an allowable string property called title. Similarly, Create a property for the author's name. Call it author. Then create a public nullable datetime property called publication date. Now a book belongs to a category. So let's define an enum for that. Right click the project in Solution Explorer and select add new folder. Name the folder enums. Now right click the enums folder and select add class. Name the class category and click add. Again, remove the using statements and mark the class public. Change the class to an enum. Let's define a few members such as science, technology, fitness, travel. Let's go back to the book class and define a public property of type category. Let's bring the namespace simplebookcatalog.domain.enums and call the property category. Click the save all button. Our domain layer is now complete. Let's create a project for our application layer. Right click the solution and select add new project. From recent project templates, double click the class library template. Let's name the project simplebookcatalog.application and click next. We have .NET 8 in the drop down. So let's click create. In this application project, we want to define an interface for our repository. This repository interface needs to be able to access the book entity class in the domain layer. So let's add a project reference from the application project to the domain project. So right click the dependencies node and select add project reference and select simple book catalog domain here and click OK. Let's delete the class1.cs class file. Right click the application layer project and select add new folder. Name the folder interfaces. Right click the interfaces folder and select add new item. Select interface from the list and name the interface iBook repository and click add. Let's remove these using statements and make the interface public. Let's click save all. Now that we have our repository interface in place, we need to implement the repository. This repository implementation will belong to the infrastructure layer. So let's go ahead and create a project for that. Right click the solution and select add new project. Double click the class library template. Let's name the project simple book catalog dot infrastructure and click next. Again, we have .NET 8 here. Click create. The infrastructure project needs to use the repository interface that's defined in the application project. So let's add a project reference to the application project. Delete the class1.cs class file. 
Dry click the infrastructure project and select add new folder. Name the folder repositories. Now right click the repositories folder and select add class. Name the class book repository and click add. Let's remove the using statements. Unmark the class public. Now this class needs to implement the iBook repository interface. So let's implement that. Bring in the namespace simplebookcatalog.application.interfaces. Now this repository class has to work with the data access API. Since we are going to use Entity Framework Core Object Relational Mapper as a data access API, we need to go ahead and install the NuGet package for that. In particular, we need to install the NuGet package for the database provider that we want to use. So in our case, we are going to use SQL Server Express Local DB. Let's install the appropriate NuGet package. So go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager and Package Manager Console. Set the default project to Infrastructure and type in install dash package Microsoft dot entity framework core dot SQL server and press enter. In entity framework core, we need to create what is known as a context class. So right click the project in solution explorer and select add new folder and name the folder context. Now right click the context folder and select add class. Name the class simple book catalog db context and click add. Remove the using statements. Mark the class public. This class has to inherit from Entity Framework Core's DB Context API. So let's do that. Bring in the namespace Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore. Now, in order to talk to the database, the DB Context class needs to know what database provider to use and the connection string information. So here we can declare a constructor into which we can inject DB context options of simple book catalog DB context and call it options and pass this information to the base class constructor. Now the job of the context class is to wrap the domain entities into a data model by exposing them as DB sets. So let's create a public property of type DB set of book, bring in the namespace simple book catalog dot domain dot entities and call the property books. This books property will be mapped to a corresponding table named books once we create the database. Let's go to the book class. The different properties of the book class will be mapped to the corresponding columns in the books table. Now by convention, the ID property will become the primary key. And since we have defined the title and author properties as being nullable, the corresponding title and author columns will be allowed to have null values. If we want to override these default conventions, we can use data annotations and fluent API. Let's first see how to use data annotations. Data annotations are attributes that we can apply on model properties. So let's say for example, the title column should have a mandatory value, so it should not allow nulls. So we can apply the attribute required Bring in the namespace system.componentModel.DataAnnotations. Likewise, we can specify the maximum number of characters the column can hold by using the max length attribute and passing in a number. Let's copy the two attributes for the author property as well. Note that we can use string length instead of max length because it adds support for client side validation as well. Another way to configure the model is to use the Fluent API. Note that we are not going to use Fluent API for our demo. We are going to stick to data annotations. But for the sake of completion, let me demonstrate how to use the Fluent API. So let's go to the simple book catalog DB context class. And here we can override the on model creating method. So say protected override and choose on model creating and remove the call to the base method. And inside this method, we can say model builder dot entity of book dot property e goes to e dot title dot is required dot has max length 100. We can copy this and paste it below and change title to author for enforcing this on author as well. Again, as I already said, we're not going to use Fluent API. So let's remove this method. Now that our context class is ready, we can use this context inside our repository. 
So go to the book repository class and define a constructor. Normally, we can inject the context class directly into the constructor, but since our presentation layer will be a Blazor web app with support for interactive server rendering, meaning we'll add support for Blazor server, we need to inject IDB context factory of simple book catalog DB context. Let's call it factory. Create a private read only field of type simple book catalog DB context and call it context. And inside the constructor, initialize context to db context. Since we are injecting IDB context factory into the constructor, we need to register the service in the startup project. So let's create a new project for our presentation layer. Right click the solution in solution explorer and select add new project. From this drop down here, select blazer and select the blazer web app template and click next. Let's give the project a name of simple book catalog and click next. So here in the drop down, we have .NET 8 selected. We have the authentication type set to none. Let's leave the interactive render mode set to server. So this configures interactive server rendering using the Blazor server hosting model. And let's leave the interactivity location set to per page or component. So this means that the entire application will use static server rendering, but then interactivity can be enabled on a per component basis using interactive server. And let's leave this checkbox checked and click create. Let's set this project as a startup project. So right click the project and select set as startup project. Now we want this project to reference the application and the infrastructure projects. So right click the dependencies node and select add project reference and select the application and infrastructure projects and click OK. Now open the program.cs class file and here let's register the services required for DB context factory. So say builder.services.addbcontextfactory and pass in simple book catalog db context as a type argument. Bring in the namespace simple book catalog dot infrastructure dot context and pass in a lambda expression as a method argument. So say options goes to create a code block and inside that say options dot use SQL server. Bring in the namespace Microsoft dot entity framework core. We can pass in a connection string. Now instead of hard coding a connection string, we can fetch it from a configuration file. So let's say builder dot configuration dot get connection string and pass in a string with the name of simple book catalog connection. Copy the string and open solution explorer and double click app settings.json file. Put a comma and define a connection strings section and inside that paste the connection string name and give it a value of server equals local db backslash backslash mssql local db semicolon database equals simple book catalog semicolon trusted underscore connection equals true. This is the connection string to use if we want to connect to SQL Server Express local DB. Now it's time to create the database. In order to do that, we can use Entity Framework Core migrations. So we need to do two things. We first need to create a migration and then apply that migration. So go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager Console, and make sure the default project is set to the infrastructure project. Now to use migrations, we need to install a set of tools. So for example, if we just go and say add dash migration, initial, and hit enter, we see we get an error. So let's install the required tools. So say install dash package Microsoft dot entity framework core dot tools. Now even after installing the tools, if we say add dash migration, initial, we see we get an error. This is because our startup project does not reference Microsoft dot entity framework core dot design. So let's change the default project to simple book catalog, which is our startup project. And now install the package Microsoft dot entity framework core dot design. Now change the default project back to infrastructure and try creating migrations. It will succeed. So let's say add dash migration initial. 
If we open Solution Explorer, in the infrastructure project, we can see a migrations folder. And if we expand that folder, we can see a class file that ends with initial.cs. That file is visible right here. We see it contains a method called up. This method contains instructions on what changes need to be made to the database when we apply that migration. So in this case, it will go ahead and create the books table. Similarly, it contains a down method that contains instructions on what changes need to be made to the database when we revert or undo a migration. So in this case, it will drop the books table. So the Entity Framework Core migrations feature lets us evolve the database schema as the model changes. Now go back to Package Manager console and apply the migration. Type update dash database and hit enter. Let's check if the database got created. Go to view SQL Server Object Explorer, expand SQL Server, expand the local DB instance and then databases. We see we have a simple book catalog database. Expand that and expand the tables node. We have our books table. Now if you further expand that and the columns, we can see the various columns. These columns correspond to the properties of the book entity class. And as you may notice, the title and author columns have their maximum length up to 100 characters and have the not null definitions as well. So this is due to the data annotations that were applied to the properties on the book entity class. That's it for this video. Hope you found the video useful. Thanks for watching.